Hello and welcome back. My name is Colton from Ankeny Van Builds and today I'm going to show you how I installed these floors in this 148 inch wheelbase Ford Transit mid-roof. Now unfortunately yesterday when I was filming the Max Air Fan install video the camera batteries died and I wasn't able to film us actually installing the floors itself but I'm going to provide you with plenty of tips on how I did it and how to do all these unique cuts that require special notches, different angles, uh, using the jigsaw, using a sander. I'm going to provide you with plenty of tips and I'm going to show you what you need to look for when installing this flooring. So if you haven't already, if you want to help my channel grow, if I want to be competitive in this van building niche of YouTube, uh, it would really help me out a lot if you like this video, left a comment, doesn't matter what it is, and watch the video from start to finish. This will help push my video up to more people and hopefully help more people out. So if you haven't done that already, please consider doing so now and let's start this week's video. Okay, so starting off, this floor right here is from the brand Life Proof. I believe it's called Sundance Honey Hickory, something like that. I'll leave the link in the description below. I just got it at Home Depot and I used about four and a half boxes, so I would buy five. If you're afraid of messing some boards up, maybe purchase six just to give yourself a little bit of grace and you don't have to run to the store to get more pieces. But first tip I'm going to share with you is how I started out laying these boards out. So I don't know how obvious it is from the camera, but notice these edges, how they're all staggered. Well, what, well that is something you want to look to do when you're installing these floors. And with these boards being exactly four feet, it makes it a lot easier. So what I did was I cut one board. Or I had one board be a full piece, so four foot, one foot, two foot, and then three foot. So my first four rows, I started out with this staggered pattern. So I made those cuts first. Then when I went to go lay out my first row to make sure that it is straight with the van, I got this piece of trim. It's three quarter inch thick. I placed it right in here up against the van. That way, when I was installing layer after layer after layer, the boards wouldn't slide and get closer to the wall. And the reason you want to leave room off the wall is because this material will expand and it will contract when it gets hotter and when it gets colder. So this allows you enough room for it to expand and contract and this gap will be covered up by the walls when we go to install those later. Now, if you notice in the Ford Transit, this board right here is not a perfect 90 degree angle. So to get this to be trim and flush all the way up across this top edge, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the trick that I used in order to get that. And then as you continue down this row, we have this piece right here, this rib sticking out. I'm gonna show you various different ways to make this cut right here. So in order to find this angle here, what you're gonna need is this T-bevel, I'll leave a link for it in the description below, but it, what it's designed for is helping you find whatever angle you need. So what I did here to get this cut was I laid this board out where I wanted to start my row. I put this right up against it, slid it forward, waited, moved this until I got the right angle, and then I tightened this wing nut down just like that so it won't move. And then with this, I'll show you over at the miter saw what we're gonna do to get this line. So now over at the miter saw, you'll see that this is completely butted up against the edge. We're set to zero degrees, so you notice that the line doesn't match up perfectly with where it's gonna cut. So you come down here to your miter saw, you lift up out of the zero degree and you move this until it is level with your line that you set and you keep doing that and you bring the blade down until you see it goes right along that line that you traced. Once you get that, then you know your angle is correct. Give you that perfect angle that you measured out before. Always, always, always be cautious of which side you're gonna cut and also when it comes to ripping it on a table saw, knowing which side 
you're working on. That way you don't get disappointed when you come up to the end of it to click it in and it's backwards. So always, always, always be cautious of which side you're cutting. So then after I made my cut, I come over here, line it up against my board, my spacer board, bring it forward and you can see that it is perfectly at the right angle that we wanted. So now talking about finding out how to notch this piece out, what you do here is you get your board that you want to cut, put it right up against this thing that's in your way. Make sure you line it up exactly where you want the board to start and you just make two simple lines on either edge of where this rib comes out to be. Now to find the depth of it, you can either use a tape measure or you can bring it up just like this, line it up where you want it to go, find this outside edge and make a mark. So now once you have your mark for left and right and how deep it needs to go, we'll go ahead and take it back into the shop and I'll show you how to trace this out. So what I do here is I have my two lines and the depth of it. I bring my speed square right up to where the right up to where the depth of it goes. And I can see it's right at two inches. You can also use a tape measure to find out that it's right there at two inches. Now I bring my speed square up to those two lines that I made, put my pencil right up to it, and draw the line right out to two inches. Do that on both sides. And then if you also wanted to get even fancier, you can get one of these, set it to two inches, lock it in place, and then use this as your guide to draw your line. So right there is the perfect notch that we're gonna be using to cut out. Now remember you're using the cross cut sled and the table saw fence for safety reasons. Table saws can be very dangerous. I don't recommend freehanding anything really on table saws, but if you have to, I wouldn't do it with any other material other than this flooring because the bottom of this flooring has rubber, so you can get really nice grip on it. If you are going to freehand it, make sure you have positive control of the board at all times. We're moving very slowly. The last thing you want is the blade to catch this board and to throw it any direction, you don't want kick pack, anything like that. It also helps having a brand new blade that is sharp, so it's gonna cut through like butter. You don't want any resistance if you're gonna be doing something like this. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how I'm gonna cut out this notch using a table saw. So there are various different ways on how to cut out this notch. I'm gonna show you this technique here using the table saw. So right here I got my cross cut sled, and what we'll do here is We'll use the sled to push this across. Also having our table fence lined up on the inside line of this cutout we're trying to get. And we'll simply push it until the top tooth is right here at the corner. And then we'll bring it back. We'll move it over, line it up with the outside edge of this blade right on the inside edge of this line. Set up, this, set up the fence using the crosscut sled, pushing it forward until we get to this corner and then bringing it back. Then we can move the fence out of the way, loosen the crosscut sled ever so slightly, angling it so that it can cut at a fairly steep angle, attempting to get from one corner to the next. So cutting it across just like that and then spinning it around doing the same thing the other direction, going from corner to corner. And now of course you could always just use your jigsaw Cut one straight line, the next straight line, curve it and finish off that cut. Great, but sometimes jigsaws can get a little bit wobbly, especially if you're using thicker material, that blade can sometimes bend and flex as you're cutting, making it so it's not perfectly straight. But just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and I'll make another notch using just the jigsaw.
So you can see even with the speed square, this line did get a little bit away from me, uh, but it's a much quicker, much more efficient way of doing it, but not always the most precise. So I hope you guys found that helpful. Now let's go into a different part of the van that I thought was very difficult. So I'll show you how I got around it. So as you can see here, this piece alone took a ton of time, but you can see there's a rounded corner at the top, an angled corner at this piece of trim. We got a notch that we had to bump out here, which you can see isn't even straight. So, so we had to match this angle here. And then we had to rip the whole board in general, just so it could fit in here. And I also needed to leave enough space on this edge so it will allow for expanding and contracting. So the first step I took with this board was this overall width and the overall length that I needed from here to here. And I ripped an entire piece at this dimension here. So this sacrificial board that I'm using to demonstrate this wasn't long enough, but it will still get the point of finding these angles here. So what I did was, was I pushed it up to where I needed to make my cuts. So I knew this piece was right here. And then going further in, the next cut was right here. And I knew it came out at an angle. And then standing it straight up, I knew how wide they needed to be by marking, by standing it straight up, lining it up with the inside edge, marking it there. Same with over here, lining it up with that edge and marking it right here. So if it makes it easier, you can also mark them. So you could say this is cut number one, number two, number one, and number two. Then we could go back to the workbench, draw out the lines that we need. We can use our angle finder to get these angles right here and trace it on to our board. So I'll show you how I did that. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to talk through how I'm doing it while I'm doing this. So I got my first cut here and my first, my first mark here and my first mark here. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line just so these are parallel, just like this. Now my speed square isn't long enough so I can finish drawing the line using this guy right here. So line it up, tighten it, and then trace the edge. So I know that this is the first cut I'm gonna, so I know that all of this can go, but remember there's this angle here, so I drew it to the furthest point. So now if I drew another line that came to the edge of where that point was, I could bring that down like so. So I know to keep here to here to get that angle. It might be hard to see on the camera, but it should make sense in a little bit. But basically we're gonna cut a line all the way to this point. Now continue the process with this other line. So my first cut or my second cut comes out to about an inch and a half. So we'll bring it down here and then using this guy again, we can line this up, draw our line, just like that. And we know that this part can now get cut out. So I actually slightly misspoke. So if I get a close up here, you can see this is where that corner of that angled cut is supposed to be. So from this corner down to there, that is our angle that we were looking for to begin with. So let me go ahead and erase all this. So now I ran in, got that angle, line it up with the edge of the board just like this. Start here in the corner and bring it out. So now that you're looking at it, you can see it start to take shape of how it's supposed to look once it gets installed. So what I'm gonna do now is set my table saw fence 
right up to this line, cut this line so it's perfectly straight, and I'll stop it right about here, cut the rest off, move the table saw again until it's at this point right here, move it in to this corner, and then I'll cut this line right here using a jigsaw, and this line right here using a jigsaw, and that is what will make it start to take shape. So let me demonstrate that. the aftermath of what we just did go ahead line it up and as you can see it's basically a perfect fit but if you notice this top corner is supposed to be rounded and we have this 90 degree angle it'd be a little awkward to do it with a jigsaw so a very simple solution to that is get your orbital sander go to the corner of it Take the corner off, and there it is. So you can see, perfectly matches that corner, lines right up with that trim, matches the angle of this, and if you had it the right length to begin with, it would be right at the perfect length. So I hope you guys found this video beneficial. I hope you found it informative. It was kind of like an Ankeny Van Builds Academy. I felt bad for not filming the process as we were doing it camera batteries died, but I felt like this was probably a little bit more helpful rather than just watching a time lapse of me putting it in. So if you thought these tips and tricks helped, let me know in the comment section below. So I think I'm going to end this video here. If I want to be competitive and against all these other van channels, I need your guys' help. So liking the video, watching the videos from start to finish, uh, leaving comments, all that is so helpful. Um, I'll provide the links in the description below of all the tools that I use today and the type of flooring and the trim that I put in. So that way you guys don't have to go search and find it for yourself. It'll be right there in the bio. I wish you guys the best of luck installing the floors in your vans, and I'll see you guys next week. See ya.